Um, if you would join me then with our call to worship in your bulletins. Christ is with you. Our lives are filled with questions as we see violence raging all around. Lord, make me an instrument of my peace. We clamor for peace, for a cessation of violence, for calm to return. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. We see people wounded by wounded people, killed by those already dead. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. When will the violence end? When will all feel seen, heard, loved, and accepted? Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Let us pray. Lord, we are beset with cares and concerns. We recognize that all too many live without hope, feeling abandoned, isolated, rejected, replaced, or otherwise less than others. Our society divides, judges, condemns, and excludes with abandon. At times we are the victims, at others, the oppressors. Grant that we might learn to rise above this fray. Grant that we might offer others the same acceptance and belonging we have found in you. Grant us to speak welcome to the excluded, comfort to the afflicted, hope to the hopeless, and love to the broken and wounded. Make us the implements of your peace, care, compassion, inclusion, and love. Amen. If you would join me in hymn number 154 in your blue hymnals, we will sing verses 1 and 6, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, number 154. <laughs>
joys or concerns do you have to share at this moment? Todd Helm. Helms. Todd Helms had bypass surgery. We'll have it tomorrow morning. Okay. Other joys or concerns? Get, getting uh, Jim's getting stitches out on Tuesday. Okay. Others? I travel home for my mom and the rest of my family. We'll include a whole bunch of other people traveling this week. Okay. Other joys or concerns? Mm -hmm. uh, families impacted by the shooting in Uvalde and also Buffalo, the last of the funerals from Buffalo were this week. Okay. There was also a shooting this morning in Chattanooga. First news I heard this morning was a text from my sisters. In 1975, there were major floods in, for the second year in a row in Recife, uh, Brazil, where we were living. And uh, there was flooding again uh, this weekend. And the first report I heard, at least 31 people had already died from that. Appreciate your prayers for all those in Recife and surrounding areas. Other joys or concerns? It's a joy that we can come together and worship and talk about the things that concern us. Joy that we can gather and share our concerns. Celebrating 41 years of Scott's life with us, the party today. Other joys or concerns? Let's turn to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you that we can gather together in community and family. In a place where we feel safe to share our joys and concerns as well. Knowing that we can rely on one another to lift us up. To hold the ropes for us as we undergo uncertainty and trying times. We pray for Todd Helms, whose bypass surgery is scheduled for tomorrow. For June, whose stitches will be coming out on Tuesday. For so many traveling this weekend, including Liddell and other family members. For families ripped apart by violence in Uvalde, Buffalo, Chattanooga. Floods causing damage and evicting people from homes and causing so much turmoil in Recife and surrounding areas. We thank you for Scott's 41 years that we can rejoice in and celebrate. We thank you for community with whom we can gather and share our concerns. We pray for the family of Laura Chatfield, who is suffering with her passing this last week. Grant that we might know how to better extend your grace, love, care, and concern. Offering support to those who are hurting. Offering encouragement. Offering grace, love, acceptance and helping one another to heal amid the 
upsets and turmoil that beset us. We recall those words by which Jesus taught us to seek your face, praying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. we face are always before your presence. Our needs, our wants, our desires, our successes, our failures, our uncertainties are always before you. And so as we bring these gifts to you to be used in the furtherance of your kingdom, your reign on earth. Take the balance of our lives as well, we pray. For we submit our lives wholly and completely to you as your servants here on earth. Bathed in the blood of the Lamb, clothed in the identity of Christ Jesus, who has become our all and in all that we might reflect you more fully to the world around us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you would join me in our affirmation of faith, number 883 Statement of Faith of the United Church of Canada. Blue Compass. 
We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and through us. We are trusting God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Today's text comes from Revelation chapter 22, verses 12 through 21. Revelation chapter 22, verses 12 through 21. Hear the word of the Lord. See, I am coming suddenly. My reward is with me to reward those according to everyone to their own work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and fornicators and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. It is I, Jesus, who sent my messenger to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The breath and the bride say, come. And let everyone who hears say, come. And let everyone who is thirsty come. Let everyone who wishes Take the water of life as a gift. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this book. If anyone takes away from the words of this book of this prophecy, God will take away that person's share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this book. The one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming suddenly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. Word of God for the people of God. A Christian recently told me that coming to Wingate, United Methodist Church years back was the first time they had ever heard the gospel was about confidence in God's love rather than a message of fear. It's not a hard concept. It's not difficult to communicate. Yet it is somehow a message hidden far too deeply for many people to grasp, accept, and share. We seem too wrapped up in games of manipulation to embrace the notion of enabling people to freely receive a gift not wrapped in shame, guilt, or some other emotional blackmail. Fear is not a gospel tool. No matter how badly we may want to wield it, Manipulation does not yield transformation, even if it promises to control another's visible words and actions. Access to God is free, simply because God wills to grant it lavishly. Lavishly abundantly, 
generously, graciously are the appropriate words here. God is not stingy. God does not withhold blessings from us, wielding them as weapons to coerce us. God does not deal in scarcity as a means to force us into conformity, to strangle humanity into submission. Scarcity and coercion are attitudes and actions that run exactly counter to the identity, will, and purposes of God. For John, those would have been appropriate descriptions of the way Rome operated. They were not, however, appropriate to apply to what God is doing, what God is planning. John lived in a world driven by fear. The massacre at a school in Texas this week would have been a run-of-the-mill occurrence regarding its number of senseless deaths, just like the shooting in Chattanooga this morning. Jerusalem in Jesus' day saw three crucifixions per day on the average. Human life held little value to the Romans. As long as it was not the life of a Roman citizen, they didn't really care. Others were little more than a means for Roman prosperity to grow. Keeping a tight rein on who could participate in Rome's bounty and power was of the utmost importance. All society was structured around the varied worth of individuals into all sorts of classes and categories. Being Roman put you at the top, but then you needed to be male. Then you needed to be free. Then you needed to be an adult. Then you needed some sort of position. Then you needed wealth. Then you needed people under you. If your citizenship was a matter of birthright, that was another point in your favor. The women, servants, slaves, children, those under you took their relative standing from your position and prominence. Paul countered all those layers of relative worth with a statement that being Jew, Gentile, slave, free, male, or female amounts to nothing. Because Christ is all and in all, and we are one. John puts the concept to rest in today's passage in different terms. He says, let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. Anyone. You just need to want it, to accept it. That's all. All those other distinctions have no meaning whatsoever. Forget the nonsense about your position in society. Forget the concerns over getting ahead of others at someone else's expense. Forget working hard to build your dream and make it come true by sheer effort, by determination, by force of will. Those were Rome's preoccupations with putting people into different categories of worth. They're not God's. It all gets swept aside because none of that is relevant to God's purposes. None of that matters to God. John says the only thing that matters is that we wash our robes in the life blood of the Lamb. 
the Lamb's life, that it flow into, through, and around us. The life and worthiness of the Lamb are what matter. Apart from that, we are all the same. We're all in the same boat. We share the very same status as creatures called to serve God. All those other things are distinctions created as much by society around us as by anything that we have done for ourselves. If I received a quality education, it's because of what social norms made available to me. If I grew up in a secure home, in a safe environment, that's nothing that I created. If I had reliable transportation, food, shelter, clothing, and opportunities for employment, that is a byproduct of things other people prepared and presented to me. They don't make me worthy. They were a gift I never could have earned. When our social structures tell us there is a difference between the haves and the have nots, they make a moral judgment on those persons society has chosen to deny the very access I was granted. Oh, I may or may not work advantageously with those benefits, but the child born to one left to survive on the streets does not begin life from the same vantage point. Society would shackle them to the range of opportunities presented their parents. Regardless of how they might attempt to rise above their status at birth. Likewise, society somehow grants greater value to the child of a billionaire for having been born with a golden spoon. A golden ticket. John says these societal pronouncements on human worth and dignity are completely invalid. The only criteria for assessing one's worth is washing our lives in the lifeblood of the Lamb. It is the degree to which we allow the life of Jesus to cover us, to be reflected in us. As Paul phrases it to the Philippians, having a righteousness that is not our own. Access, belonging, worth to God are not about us. They're about being anything, they're not about being anything more, anything different or better than anyone else. They're about receiving God's gift, their grace. They're about who God is and what God desires. Remember those words we read from the previous chapter? You know, about this new Jerusalem being comprised of people from all Nations, languages, tribes, and peoples. No distinction here regarding questions of class, ethnicity, social standing. The only thing that matters for entry is one concern that is within the reach of all. Fear does not enter the picture. For there is no question of barring entry. There is no question of alienating. There is no question of devaluing others as holding some lesser degree 
of worth. The only measure of worth and consideration is that in the lifeblood of the Lamb. Remember, it is the Lamb and the Lamb alone who was found worthy to open the seals on the scroll and to see the will of God and bring it to effect. It is only through what the Lamb has accomplished that this new Jerusalem has come down out of the new heaven upon the new earth in the first place. And the same lamb freely offers belonging and his own worth to any who would come, who would answer the call to participate. The lamb then charges others like ourselves to echo this call, to come, freely partake of the gift of life-giving water. It's not our worthiness that matters. It's not some social distinction that would elevate us over others that matters. It's not some ethnic, linguistic, economic, or inherited attribute that would grant us special access. It is only answering this call to be covered, to be baptized, to be immersed in the lifeblood of the Lamb, which gives us access to this living water. After all, our worthiness is no product of our own doing, of our own merits. Our belonging is the product of grace. For on our merits, none of us is worthy, only the Lamb. Entry, access, belonging are ours, not because of who we are, but because of who God is. How long before we are ready to embrace that reality and freely invite all others? into the same quality of belonging and participation in life to which we have all been called. How long until we echo with the lamb and the bride? This call for all to come freely and adorn themselves in the lamb's life, that we might all rejoice together in this reality of the new Jerusalem, come to her. There is free entry, free access, and it is our charge to issue that call. Would you join me with our closing hymn, Jesus Shall Reign, Blue Hymnals number 157. We will sing verses 1 and 5. 157.
that we might join our voices in calling others to come and accept this free gift of life, which you have offered so graciously. Grant that we might know how to extend full welcome, full embrace and to show no distinction among people, even as you have come into our lives, embracing us, even as we are. May your love and grace flow through us until the world hears this cry to come and drink from the living water flowing from your throat. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.